All right, greetings. We're going to talk about, or I'm going to show you how to make a subclip. Now, the reason why you might want to make a subclip is you want to do a little pre-edit of something or log a chunk out of a master clip. Let's say you have a long clip and you want to break it up into pieces. You can think of it as uh, slicing and dicing the uh, vegetables before you throw them in your stew pot, your stew pot being your sequence. Uh, right now we don't have a sequence. Uh, we have our timeline window, but we have no sequence loaded into it. And I just uh, double clicked a master clip here. 7F2B from uh, Lost. This is footage I have from uh, some old Avid courseware. And I just want to mention a couple things though before I get too deep into this. When I double click to load a source clip into the uh, source monitor, of course you can drag and drop a clip into the source monitor, but sometimes I notice people are double clicking on the color swatch or the name of the clip. Depending on uh, you know what columns you have here, the name is really close to the clip and they click, click on this. And all that's gonna do is uh, highlight the clip name for renaming the clip. So you always wanna be careful that you're clicking on the actual clip icon to load it. Same goes for sequences. So just double click that sequence and loaded that up into the sequence or record monitor. And again, a sequence has three frames versus the single frame of a master clip. Uh, this is an audio only master clip. And just to review, this is what a sub clip looks like. This is Dustin Hoffman, I believe from Lenny. The other thing I should point out is I'm actually working in the uh, Portland project that you're going to be working in, but I have a couple bins here that aren't technically in the project. I'm looking at them. I'm reading and writing to them. So I'm pointing this out again because if you are looking at bins via the other bins folder, you are saving them somewhere that's not with your project. So that could become problematic. These two are being saved to the desktop. So if I go to move this project at some point, these will be left behind. So if you are reading the bins I sent through other bins, just cautionary tale, you shouldn't be doing that. You should drag the bin files, the AVBs, into the actual project folder at the finder level and not be reading them through other, the other bins folder. In this case, I uh, know what I'm doing, so I am intentionally uh, looking at these two random bins that I have on the desktop. And uh, any change I make to this bin, subclips I add, sequences I make are gonna be saved to this bin on the desktop because everything in Media Composer is saved via the bins. The bins are where the rubber meets the road and they're the beating heart of your Avid Media Composer project. If all else fails, you can grab the bins and save your bins. Then you've kind of walked out of your house with all your valuables, essentially, if your house caught on fire or your project became corrupt. Anyway, without further ado, I'm gonna double click this source clip and I'm gonna get rid of this sequence by clicking over here and clearing the monitor. And that will clear out the monitor and clear out the timeline. So this starts out pretty basic. And uh, first thing I'm gonna do is preview this. What's going on? Okay, they're saying what's going on, which seems to be apropos for what we're going through right now. And um, like a selection you would make for an edit, you basically pick a point in time, a horizontal chunk in time. Let's say before this woman runs through frame, mark an in here or a I or E. Hurry, hurry. What's going on? So I have hurry, hurry, what's going on? Mark mark in, mark out. Maybe I'll uh, pull the, the playhead here to get to our uh, main character, what's his name, and hit the out point there. So I've picked uh, five seconds, four frames, and all you gotta do is drag from the source window to a bin, just like you would be dragging from the source window to the empty timeline window to start a sequence. In this case, rather than doing that, I'm gonna drag to the bin, and I get a little subset of this clip from here to here. I also get the track panels that are selected and I'm going to point out the track panels because it's very important that you remember the track panels. The green track panels are for the source and you have a green bar under your source window. Blue track panels for a sequence such as this sequence over here correspond to the blue bar under the record window. So be aware of that. And that color metaphor was something I advocated for a while back. The idea is in the symphony color correction tools, source tabs are green. Sequence side stuff is blue. You get a blue playhead now in Media Composer 2019 and a green playhead for stuff in the source. And the track panels follow the same color scheme. I'm gonna get this crazy sequence out of my way because I don't need it to be doing what I'm doing. I've already made one subclip, but when you're picking, you pick horizontally in time, in and out, and then you wanna pick vertically in time. So if you don't want the audio tracks, in other words, I can turn them off. They're deselected and I'm gonna drag. 
I get a video only subclip or if I turn on my source audio tracks and turning off the source video track and I get a audio only subclip. Now you might want to do that intentionally. Let's say you're pulling something because you want it as a uh, sound effect. You can see the track panels showing up here, A1, A2, V1. Those are the tracks for that clip, for that subclip rather. But I'm pointing this out because I've been in situations where I went and subclipped a bunch of stuff and I had the audio turned off when I wanted to have it turned on and I was like, oh crap, I've now made video only subclips and I don't have my audio. So be aware of that and just review. You've got your source track panels. You also have your source monitor right there, turning my video on and off and you have your source solo mute for audio right there. Now an example of why you might want to uh, subclip out partial tracks from let's say this interview. Captain Harness here, and that is his name, and he is wearing a harness, webbing, whatever you call that, regalia. But he is labbed on A1 and there's a boom microphone overhead on A2. And the A1 audio sounds... This is on this lane, is what we call tactical combat casual care. Okay. That sounds cleaner to me, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna hit the Q button, Q up to the endpoint. Q will Q you to an existing endpoint. Okay, so that's noisy. So maybe when I subclip this, I don't want the boom microphone. I'm gonna turn that off. And he's making a comment about. This lane is what we call tactical combat casualty care. Now I'm gonna uh, pick out tactical combat casualty care say that three times fast now the thing about this is you don't have to be that precise because this is just an element you know you're doing a, a pre-selection before you throw this in your timeline and maybe you want to for scripting purposes you want to just start throwing this stuff in a bin and so now i just have that little section of the longer interview uh, over here with judy divins her source comes in with a big chunk of uh audio tracks a1 through a8 as well as v1 so there's actually uh, nine media files involved with that master clip now, in this case, I don't need all those tracks because chances are three through eight are uh, empty. And if you're trying to figure out which is a, uh, track has audio and which doesn't, you can look at the waveform. Now, in Media Composer, you can't see that in the source window, but you can uh, load a clip and toggle the timeline. There's a little toggle timeline button here next to the video quality button way down at the bottom of the timeline window. And now my world has been inverted. Uh, the green track panels are on the right and the blue track panels are on the left. And I have a green playhead tracking under the source window versus if I toggle back, a blue playhead tracking the sequence window. So toggle the timeline. And now we're back to this. Now the beauty of this is I can see the waveform difference between the boom and there's a lot more noise in the boom. So I don't know, maybe I had to hear the uh, producer's question. I wanted to do that and uh, hit play. And I can see pretty much where he starts talking. So I'm going to move my endpoint by hitting I, making a new endpoint. And I mark in, mark out. And I'm going to turn off that uh, A2. And uh, muting soloing is not germane to this process at all. The monitor could be off. That's not germane. It's the track panel sele selection that's important. And notice the track panel, panel selection, the shading changes depending on which tracks are selected. So that shows you your selection like that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, toggle back. And I have that map to uh, shift escape on my keyboard because the escape button also toggles you between source and record here by default. So shift escape on my keyboard is toggle the timeline, shift escapes, toggling the timeline like that. All right, so I am now going to finally make a subclip out of this captain source clip and I'm going to uh, drag and drop and voila, there's my subclip. A couple of tips about subclips is when you're working with them, you, uh, let's say, insert the captain here. I'm going to do an insert edit using the V key or the icons if you have them mapped to your interface. V for splice in, that is, right here. I've got the command palette open, which is what you use to remap buttons. Uh, more on that later. And I just want to show you a couple other things while I'm in the neighborhood. Of course, there's overwrite and replace edit, which I can discuss at a later date. That's not mapped to the interface. V is for splice in, B for overwrite. You can think of that for B roll. There are two segment buttons that look very similar to overwrite and splice in. Arlo, or red lift overwrite, does two edit functions at once. It will lift out of uh, position A and overwrite into position B in your timeline, wherever you're dragging and dropping it. So if you're dragging into the timeline or moving stuff in the timeline, you're gonna use that 
probably 90% of the time versus the other segment icon, yellow extract splice or yes, that will extract out and then splice in. Uh, yellow is a cautionary tale. Anything that's yellow could potentially knock things out of sync. That's why 90% of the time, if you're moving stuff around, you're gonna use the red button. For now, we're doing a composer edit from the source window into the record window using splice in. So uh, that's the V key by default. So having gone down that rabbit hole, I just wanna review a couple things there because there'll be questions on the final about all those buttons and what they do. So keep that clear in your mind. And now back to splicing in the subclip. Uh, I've got a three point added in out on the captain. Uh, actually, what I wanna be doing is the subclip to show you that. So I've got the green playhead here, the blue playhead there. Basically, media composers using the playhead as the endpoint. So, without further ado, V, and I've spliced in the captain. And unlike other editing systems, even though I only have this one chunk of the captain uh, showing up here because that's the duration of my subclip, and uh, I usually like to have clip text durations turned on down here, full durations. So it's four seconds, three frames. If I uh, lasso around this cut and nothing but a cut, so help you God. I'll get into trim mode and then I'll click on the left monitor for the captain. I can still trim this out and lengthen the clip or shorten it. And the reason I point that out is some systems, I think Premiere by default cuts off the handles when you first make a subclip. There's a setting there for in Premiere for that. But in Media Composer, even though you made the subclip, it's still fluid. You can trim it so it could be a single frame subclip and your master clip's an hour long. You could still trim that out. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of trim mode. I'm back into source record mode. Another thing I should point out, by the way, is if you wanted to get back to the, the master clip or the daddy clip, AKA the big clip that this originally came from, you can use match frame. And I have match frame mapped here under the source window in this iteration of my settings. And what that will do is call back the big daddy clip. Now, a couple things about this. For some reason, I always associate match frame only with using the sequence because I would often, you know, I'm like, oh, where's the uh, rest of the, the lost clip? I want to see what was happening before this shadowy character ran through the frame. And I would use match frame there. And I've at this point, I have match frame mapped my keyboard as shift F. And so I get back to the master clip from the sequence. But if I was uh, over here in the source, with my subclip. By the way, I just hit the little twirl down here to get a list of stuff I've been looking at. They're not tabbed, they're in a list here. Uh, same thing with sequences. You hit the little twirl down, you get a list of sequences. So there's only been two sequences that I've looked at apparently. So I twirl that down and you get that in alphabetical order. Pro tip, if you hold down the option, you can get that in sequential order. So the last thing I was looking at before I called this clip up was the subclip of the captain. The point of this story is not only can you use match frame for a sequence, if you have match frame mapped under the source window, it will match frame back to the master clip. Now, if you don't have match frame mapped here, well, two things. If a, an icon's mapped to the, under the source buttons, it's gonna activate the source window. If you have an icon mapped under the, re, the record buttons, the blue bar, that's gonna activate the record window. So be aware of mapping, but if you don't have the icon mapped, here's another interesting tip that I learned at some point, and I'm not gonna do this for the sequence, I'm gonna do this for the uh, the source. I'm gonna put the playhead right about here. Main focus is on this. Okay, where he says lane, and rather than using the button, I'm gonna command double, double click the track panel, and that pulls me back to the master clip, parks the playhead, and puts an in mark. We'll call text. Right where he just said lane. It's on this lane. So it brings me back to the big clip so I can hear the full interview if I need to preview that for some reason. So command double click the track panel and that also works for the sequence as well. Command double click, I'm gonna put the playhead over here and command double click V1 and that'll bring back the clip that this came from. And that works for audio as well. If you had an audio only clip, even though it's called match frame and there's no frames in audio, you can match back to a audio only. If you had an audio only, let's say voiceover, I did command double click on A1 in that case. So match framing is an important part of this process. Another interesting part or a keyboard tip, by the way, speaking of that, if I go back to this subclip and I put the playhead here where he says, is what we call text for combat. Okay, he's about to say, is what we call. I'm gonna put the playhead there. Now, if I hold down option command and double click, 
you don't get anything. So that does, the option command does not work, but if you do option on the icon, the match frame icon, and hit it, you'll, uh, apparently that's not working on my system either. Uh, that should get you back to the master clip without putting the in mark. That's what that's about, but uh, apparently it is not working on my system. Let me try it again. Boom. And put the playhead right about there and holding down option really hard this time. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll, f we'll fix that in post. Oh, wait. We're in post. All right, I'm going to come back with part two of this and talk about using uh, subclips in conjunction with your uh, Project 3, the Portland Project.